Hello, everybody. The other day on the radio show, my my old friend and movie star Steve Martin called. He had a problem. A lot of the uh, email he wanted to get was ending up in his spam folder. I was able to help. Stay tuned. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit. Uh, a couple of weeks ago on the radio show, I got a call from a friend in need, my friend Steve Martin. Yes, that's Steve Martin. By the way, he's so funny, and I highly recommend the 30-minute reunion of Father of the Bride that they just shot. It's available on YouTube and Netflix uh, for free, and it's hysterical to benefit the World Central Kitchen. Um, he didn't ask me to do that plug. In fact, he told me not to, but I'm going to do it anyway. But he had a problem a lot of us have. A lot of uh, the mail he wants is ending up in the spam folder. Listen. I'm a, I use a Windows computer and an iPad. And a lot of times they don't kind of talk to each other. Yeah. Lot. So I've figured out little ways. You know. But on my iPad, I have a lot of emails from people I communicate with a lot going into junk. Uh-oh. And then I'll look in junk like three months later and I go, oh, yeah. so-and-so. And I, I, I move it to the inbox and all that. But I'm a little frustrated because I think I'm going to miss some, you know, some friend who's going to think I don't talk to him anymore because these emails are going to junk. So this is actually not an uncommon problem. Of course, spam used to be the big problem, right? All that junk mail. Almost 90% of all the email going through the Internet was spam. In fact, it was the vast majority of Internet traffic, period. Guess what? It hasn't gone away. We've just gotten better at filtering it. And one of the best filtration programs uh, for spam is Gmail. In fact, that's the one Steve uses. But as he mentioned, he's using it using Apple Mail on his iPad. So the best way to handle this problem is not from within Apple Mail on the iPad, but to actually go to the source, log in to your Gmail account. And this is the easiest way to keep mail you want from ending up in your spam e uh, mailbox. First of all, you're probably already doing this, Steve. That's how you know. There's the spam folder. It's under you know, the more button, so you might not even see it. Uh, and if you hit that, you're going to get into the spam folder. Notice, by the way, and this is kind of useful, this is actually a search filter in colon spam. So another way to get to this would be just doing a search using this term, in colon spam. Uh, as you can see here, and this is the problem, spam messages will be deleted every 30 days. So if your mom emails you or your boss... Uh, or your wife, or in my case, my boss and wife emails me. I don't want it to end up in spam. I might miss it. So how do I keep stuff from going into spam? Well, there's two things you can do. If you see an email uh, that is going to spam that you don't want to go to spam, let's let's open one. This is actually spam. but <laughs> And I'm apologizing to you, Zach's investment, but it is exactly what I want to go into spam. There's a couple of things you can do. Uh, that will keep it from going in spam in, for, in future. Remember, things get into spam uh, because Google thinks they're spam, but it's all because of its training. And that's one of the reasons Gmail does such a good job with spam, is that all the Gmail users, when they get spam in their regular inbox, are marking it spam, and that's giving it a lot of information about what is and isn't spam. But notice, right there at the top, why is this message in spam? It's similar to messages that were identified as spam in the past. That's their crowdsourcing. And you can then hit this button that says report not spam or even just remove this spam label. If you click that box, it'll go out of spam. But I would suggest you report is not spam because by doing so, you're giving Google some more information. In fact, if you do that, sometimes when you do that, Google will pop up a little pop-up that says, okay, do you want me to make sure 
that uh, I don't put this in spam in the future. Here's another message sometimes you'll see. This message seems dangerous. Similar messages were used to steal people's personal information. That means these were phishing emails. doesn't mean this is a phishing email, but Google thinks it might be. The question mark will give you more information. You can, you can read about it. In fact, if you hit the question mark, you'll get what I'm basically telling you, which is how to do this on the computer, the Android, or the iPad. If you're using Gmail on the iPad, you can do it there too. If you're using Apple Mail to get your Gmail, I recommend using either the Gmail app or your uh, Apple or your uh, web browser in Safari on the iPad. That's fine. <clears throat> so that's one way to do it. The other thing you might want to do is when you're looking at the sender, if it is a friend or your mom or your wife, is add them to contacts. When you add them to your contacts, you're also sending a signal to Google. <clears throat> this is somebody I know. This address is something I expect mail from. Please don't make it spam. Again, none of this is 100% foolproof. <clears throat> Sometimes Google is getting conflicting messages. Some people are saying that's spam. You're saying it's not spam. But if you do it more than once, a few times, usually that's enough to train Google in future not to put the email from that person or email of that kind into the spam folder. In other words, you have to participate in the training to teach it to stop doing that. And again, the best way to do it is right from the website. So log into your Google Gmail account on the browser. You can do it on your iPad, but just do it in the browser. <clears throat> and go to that spam folder. I check my spam folder fairly regularly. You can see they delete it every 30 days. So you might want to go in there at least monthly. Make sure there's nothing you want to keep uh, in that spam folder. And if there is, mark it as not spam and uh, add that sender. If you always want to get mail from that sender, add that sender to your contact list. That should make a big uh, difference. We want Google to filter spam, but we also want to give it the information it needs not to do so. Steve, it's great to hear from you. Thanks uh, for the call. Uh, I also want to give you a plug. Steve's been uh, doing some great New Yorker captions for Harry Bliss's cartoons, and they're coming out with a, uh, a book for the holidays that I think will be a wonderful gift. You might want to look for that. It comes out November 17th. It's called A Wealth of Pigeons, a cartoon collection. Uh, Harry Bliss and uh, Steve Martin. One of the things I like about it, it's all animals. So it just makes you feel good. <laughs> uh, I'll be certainly, a few of you will be getting that as your uh, holiday gift. It comes out in a uh, couple of weeks. Thanks, Steve, for the question. Thanks, you for, thanks to you for uh, watching. If you have a question, email askthetechguy at twit.tv. Of course, our show always brought to you by LastPass. LastPass can help you manage identities and promote good security behaviors while your employees are remote. You want your employees to have secure password storage. Well, LastPass gives them their own vault for storing every app, every web login they use, so they'll always have their passwords with them and can gain access from anywhere, from any device. Working remotely should add convenience, not frustration. Rest easy knowing that your business is secure with LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. And that's it for this edition of Ask the Tech Guy. I'll be back Saturday and Sunday with the Tech Guy radio show and next Monday with another episode of Ask the Tech Guy. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you've got a question, email askthetechguy at twit.tv. I'm Leo Laporte, your tech guy. I'll see you next week. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email askthetechguy at twit.tv.